performance requirements of hardware, communications devices. Now, communication devices allow for data to be transmitted, sent, and received between devices on a network. A variety of connectivity devices and mediums are required to establish a communications infrastructure for an enterprise. Essentially, we are network systems when we're creating an enterprise system. So we have multiple devices all connected to one another through different mediums and sending data around within that network and also connecting to the internet. So we need to have a communications infrastructure within our enterprise itself that connects to the public network so that clients can connect to us through the internet. So we're going to talk about devices and mediums related to that in this video and we'll start off with central nodes and these are devices that are used to connect multiple nodes or network devices together. One of the main ones that's used locally is known as a switch which has multiple communication channels as well as multiple ports to physically connect devices with each other through the use of cabling. All right, and then from there, we also have what's known as a router, and you might have a router within your home. So they also have ports on too, though usually not as much, but they also have wireless capabilities, and you might connect your mobile devices wirelessly to your router so that you can get Wi-Fi within your home and connect to the internet. So they don't just provide uh, connection to the internet, but we say they give us access to external networks too, all right, and they are directly connected as well to the telecommunications network in order to help users access the internet. And then another device that you might see in public situations, such as when you're at the shops or at the library, are wireless access points. They can also be used as central nodes to allow people to come in from the public and then use their devices to wirelessly connect to the internet so that they can do work in those environments. The next area then I'll talk about is what's actually connecting devices together. And that's what we talk about communication mediums. And we've got two classifications here. We've got wired mediums and wireless mediums. So wired mediums are used to physically connect network devices together. So we're talking about cables here, such as twisted pair, which is what's in that blue ethernet cabling, okay, inside there coaxial cabling which you'll see for your antenna behind your tv and then optic fiber cabling which is used in our nbn network and is actually the fastest type of cabling we use and actually uses laser light to transmit um, signals and data okay down laser within hair thin fibers which is quite amazing there's, a, there's multiple fibers in there which is why it's able to carry so much data so they are the wide mediums. And then from there is the wireless mediums, which is what we use to wirelessly send data around. Okay, and they use different wireless frequencies, such as microwave, which uses tall towers to send data 40 to 50 kilometers apart. Then satellite technology, where we have satellites that are sent out into space and rotate with the orbit of the Earth, receiving uplinks from the Earth and sending a downlink back to other users in order to send global transmissions. And then finally, radio waves, which is the backbone of Wi-Fi. When you're using Wi-Fi, you're accessing radio signals being uh, sent and transmitted within your home or within whatever place you're actually using the Wi-Fi in that scenario. So they are the different communications mediums. Now, we've got our central nodes and everything's connected through mediums. How do we actually access things that are stored within the places we're connecting? Well, that is through servers. Okay, servers make use of storage mediums, such as hard drives, which may be stored within RAID storage systems. We actually store a variety of different things. In most cases, data and files, all right? And then people who connect to specific networks, okay, and want to use the resources on servers, they do this through what's known as the client server architecture. So if I'm connecting to a network or connecting to a website, the computer I'm on right now is the client system and it makes requests of the server or the website that I'm connecting to. So they are the host, okay? And so they are providing me with resources. What might those resources be? Well, there's a variety of different types of servers out there which people may connect to. There's file servers which may be used for storing documents and media, which then everyone who connects to that network can receive. And not just receive these days through things such as Google Docs, they can also edit them and share them and do a whole variety of things, but the files are all stored online. We've got mail servers as well, which is used for storing email. We've got print servers, which people can connect to on a network. And no matter what location they may be within that network, they can send it to a centralized printer who queues all the prints that are being requested by the multiple users and then does the print on the actual host machine. And then finally, web servers, which we're connecting to all the time, which hosts the files for a website and then obviously displays the website at the source and the user or the client sees it portrayed through a web browser. 
So they are all the different servers that are used. And as said, in most cases, in relation to actual hardware, it's usually hard drive stored on RAID storage systems, okay, where all the files and data are kept. The final area we'll talk about here is just, in other words, other technology, okay, that is often used for communications. Things such as a modem, which is used to modulate and demodulate analog and digital formats when it's going down different types of mediums, okay. And then the other one that's actually quite an amazing device you might already have sitting right next to you right now, which is actually a mobile phone. Mobile phones can support a variety of different transmission mediums, okay. They have cellular technology, they have Wi Fi technology, they have Bluetooth technology, all built into it so it can communicate on a variety of different type of frequencies and networks. Your mobile phone can be used in many cases to hotspot and provide you with internet access in which it's connecting with its own provider in order to receive a Wi-Fi signal and to allow you to exchange data on the public networks made available. All right, so even your mobile phone can, can be, is obviously considered a communications device because even off oftentimes the software within it too enables communication. You can message, you can do phone calls, you can engage with social media, you can video a phone and video conference. It's got a whole range of things that make it an amazing communication device. Okay, but it's that connectivity that really takes it up to that other level. So I hope this video has given you a bit of an understanding of different types of communications devices, how pretty much we set up networks by establishing central nodes that devices can connect to, such as switches and routers, then things are connected using communications me uh, mediums, which may be wired using twisted pair cabling, and optic fiber cabling, or wireless, and the people are connected to Wi-Fi and exchanging radio signals or sending over long distances using microwave and satellite technology. And then we're receiving data from hosts on networks, okay, which provide things through what's known as servers, okay, and the servers store things on hard drives, which we connect to through public networks. And then finally, the other technology that may be used for communications. So things such as modems for changing signal formats when sending down specific mediums, and then the mobile phone with all its different types of connectivity uh, mediums that it has accessible, and the fact that it has all the apps on it too that support communication.